what is the ones digit of? So let's rewrite this a little bit. Uh, write it as two 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 two, the first number, and all the other ones I sort of put into one group. So it'll be two 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 plus two 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 plus two 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 plus twenty two plus two, and then the numbers that are in the brackets they all add up to two four six nine and zero and therefore the final uh, result is one nine seven five three two and they want the ones digit so the ones digit is a two and that would be choice b what is the value of the this expression in decimal form 44 over 11 one ten over forty four and forty four over one one zero zero. Forty four over eleven, well that's a four. Uh, this is two point five actually. So those are pretty easy. And then we gotta somehow figure out what this is. Well, I'm not uh, the calculators are not allowed on these uh, US exams, interestingly. So I'll approximate this looks kind of similar to uh, 44 over 1,000. I mean, it's not exactly, but similar. So this is going to be 6.5, and then 44 over 1,000 in decimal form would be 0 0.04. So this approximately is 6.54. And of those answer choices, the one that's closest is C. Four squares of side length 4, 7, 9, and 10 units are arranged in increasing size order so that their left edges and bottom edges align. The squares alternate in the color pattern white, gray, white, gray, respectively, as shown in the figure. What is the area of the visible gray region? Well, it looks like I'll call this A and this b looks to me like a is going to be 7 squared minus 4 squared so that's 49 minus 16 so that's 33 and then b is going to be uh, 10 squared minus 9 squared and that's 100 minus 81 which is 19 so a plus b which is what they want would be 33 plus 19 and that is 52 and that would be answer choice e When Yunji added all the integers from 1 to 9, she mistakenly left out a number. Her incorrect sum turned out to be a square number. What number did Yunji leave out? Well, if you add up all the numbers from 1 to 9, that sum is uh, 45. So some number of these is taken out and it results in the sum being a perfect square. Now the perfect squares below 45 are 36 and then 25 and so on. Now we have to, we can only take out one number so obviously 36 is what we're shooting for and that is obtained when you take out the 9. So it'll just be 1 plus 2 all the way till 8. And that would basically be uh, how you do it and therefore the number that was taken out mistakenly left out was the 9 and therefore that means 4 is number uh, choice E. Aliyah rolls two standard six-sided dice. She notices that the product of two numbers rolled is a multiple of six which of the following integers cannot be the sum of the two numbers. So the sum uh, is what we're looking for. But first, got to concentrate on the product. The product is a multiple of 6, right? Okay. So it could be a 1 times 6, 2 times 6, 3 times 6, 4 times 6, 5 times 6, or 6 times 6. Or you could have 2 times 3, or 4 times 3. Um, that That's going to be 6, or 6 times 3. Yeah, these are going to be also multiples of 6 because you're going to have a, a 6 in there. So the sums, if we were to write them out, this is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And the sums here, 
look to me like five, seven, and nine. So, uh, which of the following cannot? So, five is there, six is somewhere, or maybe six is not. Oh, six is the one that's not there. Seven is there, eight is there, nine is there. So, the answer to this is B. Sergey skated around an ice rink, gliding along different paths. The gray lines in the figure show four of the paths, P, Q, R, S. What is the sorted order of the four paths sorted from shortest to longest? Shortest to longest, okay. Ah, oh boy. Well, let's see here. The shortest path, I think, is... I think is... Hmm, I'm not actually 100% sure about that right now. But P is, let's compare P to some of these. If I compare P to S, for, for P, it looks like, hmm. Well, if you're going, let's just divide it like that. And if you look at this part, that's identical to this part. And if you look at that part, that's identical to this part. So really, we got to compare this with this guy and obviously uh, that means that s is greater yeah and then if same thing if you compare that with that diagonal the diagonal is going to be longer so s is greater than p okay so if s is greater than p uh, i think we get rid of that one and we get rid of that one so we're down to three okay that's not so bad let's see what do i need to compare here uh, R and Q, I think. R and Q. Okay, R and Q would be, or R and P. Hmm. Let's see here. R and P. Well, all of these have R and P, R and P. Oh, okay, okay. I think that R and P would be good to compare. So let's look at um, R and P. So again, I've divided that. Now, I'm going to use red this time. That path and that path are identical. That path and that path are identical. So now we're going to compare the curve to these guys. Well, from here to here, if you went the straight line, that's shorter. And same thing from here to here, if you went straight line, it's shorter. Whereas if you went from here to here around the curve, it would be longer. So P is greater than R. So the, the remaining choice is which one is P greater than R? This one, P, is less than R. This one, P, is less than R. This one, P, is greater than R. So, D is the right answer to this question with a little bit of analysis. A 3 by 7 rectangle is covered without overlap by three shapes of tiles, 2 by 2, 1 by 4, and 1 by 1, as shown. What is the minimum possible number of 1 by 1 tiles used? Hmm. Okay. Let's see here. So let's see what we can do and let me use the different let me use red. So this guy, let's place it here. Let's place it here and let's place it here. And then this four one, let's place it here and I think that is all I can do. So now I'm only left with the the one by one. And now I got to put one here, two here, three and then four and then five. So we have to put five, and I think that's it. I think I don't think they could, there's any way. I mean, you can try to see if you can make it less, but when you fiddle around, you'll see that the minimum number of the one by one tiles that can be used is five. On Monday, Ty has two dollars every day. He either gains three or doubles the amount of money he had on the previous day. How many different dollar amounts could Ty have on Thursday three days later? We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So let's fiddle around with this and see what we get. On Monday, we start with two bucks. So we have two choices now for Tuesday. He can either gain three dollars and go up to five, or he can double and go to four. Okay. Well, if he went to 5, he can gain $3 and go to 8, or double and go to 10. If it was 4, he can gain $3 and go to 7, or double and go to 8. And then we do this once again. 8 can go up to 11, or double and go to 16. 
10 can go to 13 or double and go to 20. 7 can go to 10 or double and go to 14. And 8 can go to 11 or double and go to 16. So how many different uh, numbers do we got? We got 11. We got 10. We know 12. We have a 13. We have a 14. We have a 16. And we have a 20. So how many... Uh, different is, I guess, the key word. One, two, three, four, five, six different. So the answer to this is D. All the marbles in Maria's collection are red, green, or blue. Maria has half as many red as green, twice as many blue as green. Which of the following could be the total number of marbles? We have red, green, and blue. So we have half as many red as green. So if this is x, this is 2x. And then we have twice as many blue as green, so if this is 2x, this is 4x. So the total would be x plus 2x plus 7, uh, plus 4x, which is 7x. So the total is a multiple of 7, and of these, the only multiple of 7 in the answer choices is e, which of course would be 7 times 4. In January 1980, the Moana Loa observation recorded carbon dioxide levels of 338. Over the years, the average CO2 reading has increased by about 1.515 ppm each year. What is the expected CO2 level in ppm in January 2030? Round your answer to the nearest integer. So we're starting at 338, and we're going from 1980 to 230, so that's 50 years, right? So plus 50, and each year it's 1.515. Okay, so I guess we have to do this math. Um, it would be 338 plus uh, 75.75. I just multiplied by 100 and divided by 2. So then when you add this, it would be 413.75. And to the nearest integer, that's 414. And therefore, the answer would be B.